You're watching Power Nation. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burt. And I'm Mark Christ. And we've got a big show planned for you today. Big. Let's say monster. You must wake up every morning, is this really happening to me? Because I'm the one now everyone's gunning for, and I'm the one that they have to beat. You know, we wouldn't have had any of this if it wasn't for a truck. I says, how can a truck do this much for you? Where else but in America? How many square foot is in this building here? Ooh wee, now you're asking technical questions <laughs> that I don't have answers well, to. Well, let's talk about the trucks then. Actually, I'm the shop foreman here at Bigfoot, kind of run the shop, see over the shop. Uh, used to do some driving. <sighs> Dan's also the Bigfoot driver who jumped the airplane and then set the world record for the longest jump at the time in 2012. He says he's a shop foreman, but his title reads Vice President of Operations. What we're running now is Bigfoot 21, and it's one of the fastest, one of the most advanced race trucks in the industry. You know, Bob Chandler, back when he did it, nobody had run over cars in front of an audience. So if you go back that far, you know, this guy that owned a four-wheel drive shop actually took this truck and put it in a cornfield. The first time I crossed a set of cars with Bigfoot, I said, well, I'm gonna make sure and get over that. We, we put them lengthwise so we would go up from the trunk over to the cab and put two bales of hay behind them so it would make sure it would get up on top of it. And I get out there and I drive up and went right over him. I said, that was too easy. I come back around a little slower this time and went up and stopped on top. You could hear people laughing and screaming and everything else, you know, because all I did was drive on the cars, you know. So they did their first event in Pontiac Silverdome in front of 80,000 people, and they got rushed on the floor. But take it from that to where it is now and how the whole industry has grown, I think has a lot to do with how long Bigfoot stayed in it and how many other competitors got involved in it all at the same time, and it's still growing today. We do maintenance on motors every week. Normally, bodies do not get changed. It, it depends what event, what truck's going to, as far as bodies and what body's on it, so we can swap bodies around on trucks. And then making sure everything's clean and ready for the event, and then the tires, fuel, just normal maintenance to get these trucks to the next show and have enough of everything that they need to do it. Well, it turns out we're not just here to look around. You guys are gonna put us to work, right? Why don't you uh, grab a corner and make yourself useful? <laughs> We're gonna put this body on that truck. That's what he Where meant. do we pick it up? Just on the corners there. Okay. Corners. And we'll walk it back yep, just and just kind of set it, it on there. Four. Set it down about right there. Okay. Okay. Go forward just a quarter. There we go. There it is. That was the easy part. Now it's time to put all the bolts in. The uh, outside ones are three eighths. The inside are half inch. We're putting this body on this truck because it's leaving and going to Arkansas for an event. For an event. It's pretty cool. We never imagined we would get hands on with Bigfoot 21. And it's driving out today for an event that happens tomorrow. No pressure. This this truck we just helped you know put the body on. Let's talk a little bit about this particular truck. This is 21, right? Correct. What's, what's special about this truck? A lot of this truck is, is built off of 18. 18 and 21 kind of have the same chassis. Shock angles were a big deal on this truck. Uh, we casted our own rear end housings because the part became unavailable from ZF. Mm -hmm. So we actually, in order to keep using like the planetaries, the third members, same, same steering setup, all the hard parts that go with it, we actually cast the housing so we could continue using the same parts, which is a pretty neat deal. And the shocks, you mentioned the shocks. You guys do the shocks here. I mean, like you valve them and build them and all here. Yes, we, we assemble them and valve them here. So this is the newest truck, but you've got something else that you're working we on. We do, we're actually working on a ride truck. This is 21, we're working on 22. Years ago, we had a couple ride trucks. They were Lee Springs. There's a few ride trucks running around out there. We're building something similar. Oh yeah, let's, this Just, is it over here. This is it. Let's take a look at it. So this is the bare minimum, really. I mean, it's just the main frame starting on the roll cage, uh, 
building four link bars, no motor plates, no training mount yet, but this truck will actually have 10 seats in the back and the privileged guy gets to ride in the front that will, will actually give rides on at different events. Yeah, so that's why it's built like this with this style chassis and this flat because you're gonna put a platform on here of yeah, some sort. We'll actually put a bed on it so it still looks like a pickup truck oh, okay. and then put five seats down each side of the bed like our old ride trucks used to be. But the neat part about this is with the new ones is on the gas shocks like we're running, we're gonna put gas and coilovers on this. So when we give a ride, if the driver chooses to, he can kind of whip that thing and it just kind of lets give the people a, yeah, give a, them a feeling, ride. a feeling of what it's like to be in a monster truck. Yeah. Make it loose. Yeah. Now this one's cool. What number is this one? This one's number 18. Uh, as you can see, it's got the Bigfoot body on that we run for our Hot Wheels show. And these things jumped like over 200 feet, both of these trucks. Oh yeah, uh, the last one, Dan jumped this one, it was like 214. Wow. This one's ready to go to an event, just like the one you're getting ready yep, over the one, there. Yep, the other one that we just threw the body on, it's going to the same show, so okay. it's gonna be getting loaded up tomorrow and leaving. We don't get a whole lot of time to work on them. Yeah, and you guys have to repair them like at the event if something happens, right? Yep, if we're in between shows and it knocks the wheel off or yeah. something, we gotta fix it there. And these are our 66 Firestones that we run when we're at the shows. Um, these are buffed down. Okay. So normally they're full cleat. Probably yeah, about after there or something. Of, off of like a combine. Yeah, right? like an ag tire, yes. Hey guys, What's I up? promise you you can drive Bigfoot. Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got one for you too, Brandon. Oh, uh, do you? So we got a remote controller instead of keys. And it is a lot of fun, but it isn't Bigfoot. We'll keep trying. Coming up, will we get to drive the original Bigfoot? Number one? She is not a monster truck driver by trade. She is an emergency room nurse. Yeah, I'll be the first one to tell you that if you'd have asked me when I was 18 if I was gonna drive a monster truck, I would have said, no. Meet Rebecca Schnell, driver of Bigfoot number 15. It was something I was like, well, am I gonna be able to do this physically at that point in my life? And at that point, I'd also only moved a truck that was his, whose seat was twice my size and at <laughs> you just call me fat that's darren schnell rebecca's husband driver of bigfoot 19. well i'll say i win the most but no when we first started racing each other because they'll line us up head to head darren thought that i was like not gonna run him like the other guys would run him he would thought wrong i kicked his butt the first race that we run however in respect to that every one of the other guys that i race when they they don't just give me the race. They make me work for every win that I've ever gotten. And I 100% appreciate that because that improves my skill set as a driver and to learn to navigate different situations that you're thrown into. They are talking about a giant tour next year internationally and we did volunteer to do that. And it's just a different reward to be able to go and see countries that you never thought you would see. But not only like get to go see those, like you're paid to go see those, you spend your own personal dollars to tour them. But those are countries that we probably would have never visited on our own dime had that been an opportunity for us without the monster trucks. We took the trucks over to Doha, Qatar via cargo planes. It was massive. There was many, many trucks that jumped in the plane, flew overseas. Then we circled around to January and February. January, we were in London and Liverpool. Uh, we seated about 60,000 people in the O2 arena for our tour. And then we had a month off, and then we went back over for about eight weeks total. It's always something different. You're always going somewhere different, meeting new people. And that's the real appeal of this, yeah. is you're always doing something else. Different. There's something different. And there's always great people wherever you go. So that's kind of what keeps us going up and down the road. Absolutely. What do you guys say we go next door? Show you a few things? Why you guys want to drive this? I would die. Just maybe drive that truck. Let's go. Can I get in the bed? You can go wherever you want. <laughs> wow. This. Is surreal. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I'm sitting in this truck. It is beautiful. Fairly easy to start. Pull power on, turn the key on. You'll see fuel pressure come up. Hit start button. There it is. Normal racing ratchet shifter. 
spark, and the key just turn it. off. Kill the power. That's it. So what do you guys think? Oh, I mean, it's, it's the original Bigfoot. I mean, <laughs> I don't it's amazing. Words. Yeah, so no, it's incredible. Here's the best part. I left the keys in it. What do you guys think about taking around the parking lot? Oh, dude, you don't have to tell me twice. You don't say no to something like this. No, there, no is not in the vocabulary at that point. Oh, wow. I just got to take this in for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna go duplicate this key. And now we're going from one extreme to the other. We've got Bigfoot one on 48s. What do you think we can do to top this? Coming up, it's big, blue, its tires are 10 feet high. It's Bigfoot number five. Oh, hey. Oh, hi guys. And How's you are? Doing? I'm Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca, ready I'm to take Mark. a ride number five? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's two ways to get up. You could use the ladder or you could climb up old school way. Oh, I'm doing the old school way. All right, let's All right. go. Okay. This. Guys, right. what's taking you so long? Uh, this is kind of difficult. These tires are how tall? 10 feet. Thanks for opening the door. Oh, you're welcome. I guess I'm sitting in the middle. I bet. That's what I'm thinking. I think it's ignition switch. Yeah. Oh. Tired of driving. One of you guys want to take over? I would love to drive. All right, let's do it. Are yeah, you just gonna, slide on over. I'm going to make a little lap here. Okay. See if she wants to crank. Oh, and she she's does doing it. Give her a little pump action. Pull the brakes so. All right. <laughs> just put it in drive and go. Put it in drive. It'll click in. All right, now. Now your rear steer is on there. Now I can see these tires. Yes, you can see them really well. 
<laughs> this is amazing. Other than when I got married, well, and other than when my kids were I'll born. Keep this accomplished. We didn't roll the truck and we got it to start with just one. Bam! <laughs> We're here at Vinyl Images in St. Louis and Bigfoot's got a brand new body getting wrapped. Yeah, they're actually getting this thing ready for an upcoming Hot Wheels show that's coming up in about a week and a half. You must be Joe. I am. Mark. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Brandon. you. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. This is it. Gunkster. He'll be the new body coming out for the next week's show. Sweet. And it looks like you already got some of the doors done. We did. We actually did this to show you guys what it's going to look like. Okay. And while you guys are here, we're actually going to do the hood and possibly a bedside. Sweet. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's do it. So what we do is we, uh, we get with the client, and in this case was Bigfoot, and we talk to them and the client that they're being used with, get a design concept. Kind of go back and forth. I think we have four or five different mock-ups of what this actually was at one point. So when the client sees it, they know exactly what it's going to look like before we even get it done. And if they love it on paper, they're going to be impressed in person. We've done a, several of these, so we, we have a game plan. We've done guns, toilets. We haven't done a, a casket, but they do, do, they do wrap caskets. We blink our eyes. It's done. That looks awesome. That's how fast it can be, and that's how clean it's going to look. Yeah, I mean, that looks really nice. Well, I can't wait to see it all finished up, but for now, I would say uh, that's a wrap for us. We'll go with it. Thank you very much for coming Enjoyed by. Enjoyed it. For Thanks, Joe. Us. Great place. Thank you. Coming up, we'll get the Bigfoot story from the people who know it best. Well, the torch is being passed on to the next generation. Bob's daughter and CEO, Ann Trent, and her husband, Vice President Bob Trent, now run the operation. Their story is big as well. I actually didn't even know about the truck for quite a long time. Oh. It's, she never told anybody about it or anything like that. Back before it was really anything, I mean, he still picked me and my sister up from school. I mean, it was just a truck that had big tires on it. It didn't, it was still tr street legal at that point. We would go down to Lesterville, which is in Southern Missouri, and there's a real rocky sort of RV, not RV, recreational area, whatever. Um, and we would go four wheeling and it was just part of the family. I mean, it really was just part of the family. It was, it was just, it's just always there. We were kind of thrown into the wolves when we started working and running it, basically. And we'd, we'd done enough meetings with some of the bigger companies and realized some of the verbiage they used, which would be brand and things like that. And we decided going, you know what? We really need to treat this as a brand and sell it as such. Neither of us have any marketing background or you know, know the buzzwords or even what they say you're supposed to do to market. Neither of us has any thing formal. We just more or less taught ourselves as we went along. But I think it, it worked out well for us because we believe in the product and the brand and we're pretty confident in it. We still like doing it. Yeah. We stay pretty much family focused. Our fans are obviously every age, but we're geared, what we want to do is towards the kids. Right now we're catering to a, a younger crowd which are starting out at what? Three, four, three four. four years old. So we're taking and going back around full circle again. So we were doing shows before, let's say when you were younger or, or even your father were buying products, when you would go to a show, we would do like a, a dollar per person and, and sales for novelties. And with the grandparents and parents taking the grandkids to the shows, we're doing like $9 and $9.50 a person in sales, which is unheard of. But I think it's going around, going back through the brand that the whole family can relate to because they've all been involved with it. I also think some of it is because we're, we take risks. Sometimes we'll just, you know what? What about this? Let's just try it and see what happens. And that's what my dad did with the truck. That's why the truck ended up being what it was is because he goes, well, I want to see what happens if we put bigger axles on it. Okay, well, now that it keeps, I want to put bigger tires on it. Okay, well, now we keep breaking the axles. Now we got to put bigger ones on. And so it was just, there's always been an element of 
what's going to happen with the truck next? What's going to happen? You know, I, look at that thing. <laughs> I mean, that's just one example, and we and he, we keep doing that. We see ourselves continuing for sure with the whole Hot Wheels Monster Truck Live program because it's such a good program. We're focusing on the same age group, basically. I mean, we're, we're looking at the same thing they are looking for. And then for us to be able to help them out and vice versa is fantastic, really. And my dad is just a big kid, and I think that's, like we said, we've always, that's sort of our core thing of what we're doing. This is for the kids. That's why we all do this. We made it through and we didn't get to do any um, car crushing with it, but maybe that'll be on the list next. And you got to teach them how to drive number one. The oh. trucks that we had were an iconic trucks for them to be able to see. It's the trucks that they grew up on. Yeah. People still love it. It's like the 10 foot tire truck. I mean, it's the excitement of it. To see it going where it's going and the number of shows that we already have on the books here and abroad for next year is, is huge. Well, I have to say that is one of the most incredible experiences, not only in my career, but in my entire life. What do you think, Brando? I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's up there. So there's one last Bigfoot we wanted to come see, and it's the one at Bigfoot Park here in Pacific. Yeah, there's big feet all over this town, but we figured we'd come here, say one last goodbye to Bigfoot and Pacific, Missouri, before we hop on the interstate and head back to Tennessee. Southbound, we'll see y'all later. You wanna just take that one home? <laughs>